General, will you describe for us just what happened last night? Well, the police from the city came in to investigate a rifle shot that was fired into the house, fired through the west window, and hit the cell and hit the wall across the room and went through the wall over the desk at which I was sitting. This happened at 9 o'clock at last. Well, there's an enemy within this country, and of course it's the same enemy that uh, represents the position that we should do away with the House Un-American Activities Committee, that we should destroy our local police forces, and that we should uh, do away with our military forces. These are the, uh, you might say, the anti-Americans as far as our traditions, heritage, and constitution are concerned. And there are plenty of them in this country, in spite of the federal government's position, that there is no uh, <coughs> threat from within. There is a threat from within, and this uh, is just further indications that uh, there is a threat to our individual rights and liberties. Wow. All right. This guy sounds harsh. <laughs> well, he's, he's... That's one anti-commie. Holy cow. Well, you know, he, uh, you know, if somebody shoots at him, he he might have he might have some feelings about it. What are you going right. to do? Well, they they didn't know who did it, Eric. That's for sure. Crazy, crazy. All right, so just to let everybody know, this is actually on Rumble right now. Or it's supposed to be on Rumble right now. Okay. Uh, yep, Maybe. I see us. I see us talking. Eleven people are watching on Rumble. Well, on Rumble. Welcome wow, to Rumble, folks. Wow. Maybe Eric, it's only in prison. Maybe only get Rumble in federal penitentiaries or something. I don't know. Are you going to Rumble? No. Um, I'll try to check back and hopefully get some Rumble rants. I did put a link in the description for anybody who wants to go over there because they don't like YouTube. Um, totally understand. I'd like to go over there. How do I get there? Uh, you go to... Uh, oh, we're there now. We're over <laughs> yeah, there now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you and I are everywhere, right? We're, right. we're here. We're there. We're everywhere. I'm an undisclosed bunker retreat. Yeah, well, we're barely here. Sort of. Yeah. All right. So um, what is the Rumble channel name? America's Untold Stories. But you may have to say without the apostrophe. They have problems with an apostrophe over there. Hmm. Again, if you look in the description of this video, you can click. It'll get over there and... Please go ahead and um, subscribe or whatever they call it, and then hopefully it'll come up. I know that people have complained about it on their TVs because they can't find it directly. You have to just search it all one word, America's Untold Stories. No apostrophe because they hate English. But anyway. Wow. <laughs> you know what would be great if we had bumper stickers, honey? Like with the heart in it, I love America's Untold Stories. Okay. I, wow. like maybe with an I... Mm -hmm. love with a heart america's untold stories that's kind of like the i love new york getting back right your roots. right 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 kind of like that yeah i think that would sell yeah and then people can identify each other on the highway you well no, I, mean? I live in virginia and this is the love state so okay so they have those right in virginia well, we have love love signs they're just like randomly giant ass love signs and my wife and i take pictures at them is anybody watching us now do you know or oh uh, at rumble are we on live right now we are on live. We're oh, talking okay. to everybody now. We have 27 watching on Rumble, 206 here on YouTube. Okay. So about 10%. That's a lot of twos today. I'll tell you that much. I mean, it's, um, hey. um, what's today? Like April 22nd, 22nd, 2022. That is true. I mean, that's a lot of deuces, Eric. That is true. I, I think that the is. deuces are running wild. <laughs> <laughs> and upside down. <laughs> that's that's oh my. from my. George Bush playing cards. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, All right, wow. I just wanted to fill in some stuff I found about Walker's military background that we didn't know the week before, Eric. You okay. know, some sort of extra stuff. This um, Walker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy. Well, it was before this uh, unfortunate incident happened in Oxford, Mississippi. I wonder if they would have bayoneted him. He kind of, he's got like a toothpick in his mouth there, and he's with some good old boys. Uh Cut. But Probably just I, looking at him going, what, what what, in the hell are you all doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. That was kind of weird. I'll, I'll, well, just to get on that for a second, 
if you're going to go over there, there was something I wanted to say about that because apparently when they threw him on the plane to take him to Springfield, Missouri, they stripped him buck naked. And I think uh, buck naked is, of course, a good porn name, but I, they took all his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and they then, like I said last week, they gave him the MMPI, the uh, Minnesota Multiphasic Inventory Personality Test. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of the questions that they asked him because he referenced that test without the name. And he said, they asked me these crazy questions in custody, you know, when oh. RFK had him in custody in the mental institution. Um, number four, I think I would like to work as a librarian. These are all true, false. Keep in mind. The whole test is true, false. 18, I am very seldom troubled by constipation. Uh, 25, I would like to be a singer. Uh, 33, I had very peculiar, I have had very peculiar and strange experiences. Okay. <laughs> Number 63, I have had no difficulty in starting or holding my bowel movement. These are very, very in-depth psychological questions. 73, true or false, I am an important person. Uh, 74, I often wished I were a girl. Um, 54, mm. I am liked by most people who know me. Um, I am a good mixer is 57. Uh, 58, everything is turning out just like the prophets of the Bible said it would. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. And he finally, you know, they write, the doctor who sentenced him um, was a military doctor. And he gets all the letters from the AMA. And finally, he has to put up the money to get out, which is pretty expensive. Uh, Biden didn't pass. Dude, it's only 500. This is only 75. There's 557 questions. Uh, 67. Some doctor commented watched our show a number of months ago and said i think it's less now or had a different number but he said i was accurate from the original test so it was kind of nice um number 50 which is an important question true or false my soul sometimes leaves my body eric as you're well aware now as imagine it, as it does yes right imagine asking a guy with a silver star bronze cluster <laughs> two-star general he's in a straitjacket after being arrested in oxford mississippi by two people the two kennedys who he perceives to be communists i mean this is a strange day for him you know what i mean well i was thinking he probably need to be in a straitjacket because his normal pattern of behavior would be to punch him in the face you know? right as he did with many others yeah <laughs> so. as, as, you know so he, when he does get out by the way he was sentenced to 90 days in the psych ward um, but he got out in five. Wow. He only did five days in there because he posted bail and they put up, they made a fuss out of it and people wrote letters and he was a war hero and everything else. So he did get out, but, uh, the, the bail, which was, I mean, it was 50,000 times seven, just about $350,000 in American money today. You know what I mean? Sure. I, that he had that money. I don't even know if it was his, but you know, he did have a lot of wealthy uh, benefactors, which will lead us to the conspiracy in a little while. But let's go to April of 1963, which is the incident that we're talking about here that you showed in the video, because that incident becomes very important. Okay. The, um, there's a guy I, I sent you a picture of named William Duff, the Scotsman. Uh, I mean, his middle name was McEwen or something. And he worked for, yeah, he was a Batman for <laughs> General Walker. Now, he's got the ears. Oh, sorry, yeah, a Batman, <laughs> I guess it's some sort of valet, right? And he was Walker's Batman. And he gets fired uh, for who knows what reason for Walker. And um, Walker believed that he was the guy that took the shot at him. He hires two ex-Dallas um, police detectives who are private eyes to go after um, Duff. They find him and Duff says that uh, that's where the story comes from, that Jack Ruby um, was visiting Walker from December to almost the end of the summer on numerous occasions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. You just said Jack Ruby. That yeah, Jack, Jack Ruby, Ruby yeah. was visiting General Walker. All right, we're going to get, it's going to get crazy, Hunley. It's going to get uh, crazy. Okay. No, I, now, I've been paying attention here. Try to pay attention because <laughs> there's a lot of dots today. This is a big dot day for everyone. 
I wore my hallucinogenic uh, psychedelic tie for today because it's woo. So <laughs> a, 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 apparently Walker had a regular bridge game on Friday nights because, of course, he did. And one of the players in the bridge game was FBI agent James Hosty, who, of course, becomes famous for harassing Lee Harvey Oswald and Oswald showing up at FBI headquarters in Dallas complaining that Hosty is harassing his wife. The same James Hosty who's in a regular bridge game with Gerald Walker. So when that shot happens, uh, according to uh, Robert Surrey, who was one of Walker's men that we mentioned last week, Robert Surrey is part of that um, uh, group that comes from Germany with him back to the United States. Yeah, that, That's Larry Schmidt on the right. He is their leader. Uh, I don't think Surrey's in this photograph. I think that's oh, the two okay. other guys, right? <laughs> um, but that, that's Schmidt. He is their ringleader, by the way, the guy, the, the guy in the extreme right. He's the one that in, in Augsburg, Germany, founds the company, the, the party, C, uh, uh, Conservative USA, CUSA. And he brings these guys back from Germany after they get released from their um, assignments in, in the army. He brings them back, and the plan is to start a, uh, besides a political party, he wants to take over uh, various existing, uh, existing parties like Young Americans for Freedom, various right-wing conservative groups. He wants to take them over. And he also wants to buy a series of nightclubs and put in strippers, and that will fund part of their conservative movement. So they, they have a bunch of business. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, they have a bunch of business plans. And one of the business plans is to was to become what would be called headhunters later on. In other words, they would find employees for employers. They would find renters for housing renters, uh, rent uh, uh, homeowners who were renting houses or apartments. And it, it was kind of like ahead of its time because it was like being a headhunter, Eric, before there was actual headhunting. I read the business plan last night and it added up to be like headhunting as they're <laughs> They wanted to make a lot of money because they were conservatives and they were business guys, but they also were John Birchers and they were also Minutemen, so they wanted to fight commies. So they had a very busy plan and they decided that Dallas and obviously Walker being in Dallas was the place to go. And that's why they all end up in Dallas. But Surrey said that two nights before the shooting of Walker, uh, two men were prowling around the grounds and he chased them away. They were looking through the window of Walker's house and they were apparently the two same guys that came back and shot at Walker, according to Robert Surrey. And there was a kid at the church <clears throat> next door who um, saw these guys drive away in a 57 Chevy, two guys, one guy putting something behind the seat after the shooting and that Surrey actually gave chase in a car to downtown Dallas and lost them in high pursuit of the guys who shot at Walker. And if you show that car, there's a, yes, this car here, see, this is an interesting photo because the Dallas police, once they, re, and they denied this, but the Dallas police in this original photo that was found, according to them, in Oswald's possession, had a license plate there on that photo and they cut it out with a knife, that black spot there. And Marina <laughs> Oswald, yeah, it was obviously not, not a purely artistic job, but that's uh, uh, the back. Effective. Effective, yeah. They, they didn't want any part of that license plate to be shown. And that has led to many, many questions over the years. Marina Oswald testified that when she had looked at the photo in her possession or Oswald's possession that it had a license plate there. And she said that when they gave it to the Dallas police, um, it was a full license plate, whatever it said, you know, it was somebody important that they did not want anyone to know whose car that was. So that's one interesting thing. When you get into the shooting itself, uh, the Dallas police have no suspects. They kind of give up. This guy Duff becomes a suspect. He, disappears. They track him to Oklahoma, where he again attempts to enlist in the military, but they stop him from enlisting in the military because he was already enlisted in the military. It was <laughs> like if you were in the military in San Bernardino, 
Hunley, yeah. and then he disappeared for six months and came back and said, I'd like to enlist in the military, I guess, to avoid being AWOL or something. I, yeah. I don't really know what the plan was, but uh, Duff is somehow part of this thing because he starts naming names of people who have been visiting Walker in the past months as Walker puts his organization together. There was apparently a plot to kill Kennedy in 1962 in Mexico City that Walker is linked to. The John Birchers um, here in L.A. are massive. I mean, it's almost like the entire state of California flipped politically because in, in West Covina and Pasadena, the Minutemen are here. The John Birch Society is here. The conservative movement is here in 19. Well, it's a lot like Texas in the 90s. Flip. Right, right. I'm saying the entire zeitgeist yeah. has flipped to where uh, there was a guy named John Rosalay uh, who was a Republican from San Marino, which is in um, um, Pasadena and South Pass. He was a Republican congressman. He was an, a Bircher. He possibly was one of the plotters, according to numerous sources. Um, if you read walker's speech of why he went to oxford he rails against the kennedys as communists and satanists and you know the antichrist he actually uses the word the antichrist so here's a man who has means motive opportunity money backing weapons i mean you know he's got um uh, lorenzo hall and john howard are two of walker's men and they are arrested the day before, or I think two days before the assassination in Dallas with a trunk load of, 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 of rifles and weapons. Um, having no, They were never linked to the assassination, but indirectly they were uh, because they were these birchers and, you know, Minutemen that Walker um, commanded or influenced or ran. It's kind of vague um, what his connection was. But the point of the matter is, Walker put out the word himself, like the king would, Eric, like, I want to get rid of this guy. You know what I mean? Or, or, or it, there he is. That's a, that, that's after, uh, that's the same night as the shooting, having a cup of, a cup of Job there. Well, he's a chill customer, Silver Star. By the way, we got our first Rumble rant, Mark, $20 from Woo Sharon. Woo! From who? Sharon. Oh, Sharon. She's an old favorite. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to get back to um, his military record, which I we had some gaps in it last week. And it, yeah, yeah, just to fill in the blanks um, regarding his um, World War II, uh, Walker led the Third Regiment, First Special Service Force that we talked about, and they fought in the Aleutians. When the commandos were transferred to the Italian campaign, General Walker led the first special service force in tough mountain fighting up the Italian peninsula and at Anzio Beachhead. In August of 44, his men made a surprise landing in the Hyrus Islands off the French Riviera and killed and captured a strong German garrison that could have jeopardized the Seventh Army landing on the mainland. With the Hyrus occupied, the troops joined the main invasion force uh, moved up the Rhine River. Toward the end of the war, he was detached from the commandos, Eric, and placed in command of the 417 Infantry Division, a separate force attached to the 3rd Army. At VE Day, he was commanding a special task unit in Oslo, which is what we talked about yesterday, that they were going after the heavy water, water facilities of the Nazis in their A-bomb program up in Norway. And that's why they had Canadians involved who knew how to ski. Mm. Uh, that was the original concept was to go up to Norway and they eventually get up there near the end of the war. And then what you and I couldn't figure out this morning, uh, returning to the United States in January, 1946, Eric, General Walker served as assistant director of the combined arms department, field artillery school, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, Eric. He oh, was in okay. That's, that's where he went. Well, yeah. that's the thing. There was an assignment kind of missing. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. He was in charge of the Greek desk at the Pentagon during the Greek Civil War and made an official visit to Greece and Turkey. Uh, and then during the Korean War, he commanded the Seventh Regiment, which which we knew about. Now, did you uh, get that all back from the um, from the museum? Some because... of it, yeah. I, I've pieced together some other sources, though. In the meantime, I'm still waiting to hear from the uh, 36th um, Infantry Division Museum that they have in San Antonio. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, that's what I found since last week. 
about him. So um, this ends up with him in the in the in the twenty fourth infantry division, obviously in Germany, where we were talking about last week. But getting back to the, the shooting of him, he doesn't say anything about the shooting. He does these interviews and stuff like that. But he's on a speaking tour, like we said, with, with Reverend Billy James Hargis, um, mm -hmm. the midnight situation where he's going around doing that. And he's raising a lot of money. And unlike other people, he has a lot of friends in high. That's Billy James Hargis on the left. Um, he has a lot of friends in high places. And as you pointed out, Eric, this kind of becomes the beginning of the Reagan revolution, right? Yeah, or go, actually, Goldwater Revolution. I Goldwater, think. and then the Reagan yeah. Revolution, right? Yeah. Right. But yeah, they, they're credited, um, Billy J or whatever. They're credited with starting the modern conservative conservative movement. Now, I don't know it well enough, but it's I've gotten the impression that the Birchers kind of faded and the conservatives took over. Yes, yes, that is true. Now you say, well, who is who is uh, John Birch, right? Mm -hmm. Who is John Birch? John Birch yeah, he's was a captain. He's in California. Who, that's all I know. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he was a captain who was a chaplain um, in 1946. He was killed by the communist Chinese in mm. northern China when he was with a, a group of United States uh, uh, army men. And that, don't forget that that Walker ends up with Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan um, mm. as his chief advisor from the Pentagon um, after the dust settles with Mao Zedong. But um uh john birch was a um christian chaplain and that's okay. the name of the john birch society just if anybody is curious about that but yeah if you read the media of the time it reads very similar to today that these are trump supporters they're insane they're you know have to be put down well daisy i mean good god i mean it, it went all the way you know to the daisy commercial before, yeah no I mean, water. right this is right before that but i'm just saying that if anybody wants to know what the message was it it was as dark as you can get oh yeah i mean what johnson lbj said about uh, goldwater was uh in your heart you know he's right in your guts you know he's nuts as a matter of fact <laughs> that, that led to the goldwater rule with psychiatry right exactly true right that you couldn't use uh but that's what they did to walker they were mm -hmm. using so psychiatry never this guy from the military was a guy who never checked on him personally, and that was how they convicted him, or at least put him in the nut house. Right. Okay. Well, uh, Nick Sweeney said he was a John Birch Society member through to the mid nineties. Anyway, I, I just don't know the the prominence. About the mid nineties, like he died in nineteen ninety three, so he must have kind of ended there at some point. Could be. Could be. Yeah. But um, I feel like it got absorbed into the greater conservative movement, or the conservative movement sort of spawned. Right. Well, there's also to Pew. There's also a guy named Depew who leads the Minutemen, and the Minutemen are training with weapons. There's 25,000 Minutemen, a lot of them in California, and they have training every week with, with hard weapons. And Depew was a multimillionaire businessman who owned uh, pharmaceuticals, and um, he poured a lot of his money into the Minutemen. The Minutemen were the bigger threat than the Birchers. The Birchers were more intellectual and philosophical, but the Minutemen apparently were the ones that that if you follow this line of thinking about the plot um were the ones involved in numerous plots to kill kennedy in mexico city in 62 and you know who knows how many other plots yeah this thing here this is a great cartoon because it depicts walker drunk on birch beer you know obviously john birch beer and they they show it on the bottom and but he's shooting at these targets and i always love this because He's shooting at one with that's JFK right in the middle. And I, I, I always got a kick out of this. It's Yardley from the Baltimore Sun, political cartoonist. Um, wow. Well, you talk about prophetic. I mean, there's Ike and then there's JFK and the Defense Department. These obviously targets that, uh, that Walker's trying to hit politically. Um, but yeah, kind of ironic that the JFK Some target. people said maybe more. <laughs> maybe more, yeah. Yeah, maybe more. But yeah, I mean, the the... The situation becomes interesting because Walker, um, as we're going to get into the assassination of JFK, Walker comes back to life. And during the summer, he obviously Jack Ruby's coming over there. And I guess everybody's coming over to his house. It's a big party house, you know, in Turtle Creek. And um, the the assassination happens. And 
the next day, the next day, and I, I'll just to tell you what happened here. The next day, he calls up uh, the national newspaper in out of Munich. It's called the, it's a weekly paper, a very, very conservative right wing newspaper in Germany out of Munich. And the staff of that paper, the publisher, Fry, all of these guys are ex Nazis. And he knows them from being in Germany. They're extreme anti communists who happen to be as things would have it, ex-Nazis. And a lot of the Nazis, as you're well aware, did not get tried at Nuremberg. They just went home and were Nazis at home. And Munich was filled with ex-Nazis. And keep in mind, this is only 15 years after the war, Eric. You know, this is sure. 1960. So these Nazis are running this paper out of Munich called the National Newspaper, uh, which, is a, which is a weekly. He calls the guy up and he says that, Oswald was the one that shot at me, and he's clearly a communist. And they go, oh, that's great. He's a communist. So they put it out all over the world directly from Walker. Nobody makes this link. The Dallas police don't make it. Nobody makes it. Walker is the one that secretly calls up and, and tells them that Oswald was the one who shot at him. And because he is a right-wing leader of the conservative movement, then Oswald has to be, by his own admission, a Marxist and a communist. And this was a communist attempt to kill both Walker and JFK. And they're like, and thank, you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. And that rumor, that rumor from Walker to the newspaper spreads around the world that a communist tried to kill Kennedy. And that's the origin of, of the entire uh, rumor. Now, when, when was it that he stated that? Uh, November 23rd, 1963. Okay, because I um, I also have his um, appearance on December 6th, uh, 1963, where he kind of addresses the Kennedy thing, if we wanted to play that. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that right now. A little bit small, but... Yeah. Full justice is a requirement of our system to info include full and complete investigations. The people of Dallas and the nation are entitled to the truth and the final reports of investigations and inquiries. Pravda, Castro, and the worker started malicious and deceptive attacks on the conservative right that continues to spread holding Dallas responsible and the political party spectrum, city, state, and national immobilized. I compliment the Dallas papers on their effort to point out every possibility to the public. We must realize regarding future events that this press coverage did not extend to other cities. Dallas has been set up in the defensive instead of maintaining national unity in the face of the Cold War. He well, really did not like communists. Right. OK, so, you know, he he paints him as a Marxist and a communist and a letter appears, an unsigned, undated letter appears out of a book. And in that book, which is um, owned by Marina Oswald, is the letter from the letter allegedly from from Oswald uh, to Marina Oswald saying how to pay the gas bill, how to get the mail if I am caught or captured after this event, which she doesn't describe, it's not signed, it's not dated, it's written in Russian, it's in a book, it's found around that time, around December 3rd, and they search the house completely, and they fan all the books, the FBI and the Dallas police. Mm -hmm. So they don't find this note. They don't find this note. Okay. The note shows up in a book that they already searched, and it's delivered to the Secret Service, where she is, by a strange woman named Ruth Payne. 
<laughs> she turns the book over to the Secret Service, and they open the book, and they go, look, it's a note from Oswald about what to do after killing or shooting Walker, right? Well, it's a, these names just all keep coming up. Yeah, they just yeah, yeah. keep coming up. I now, love it. After the shooting or, or the, the alleged shooting, which they try to frame on, on, on Oswald, Oswald goes to New Orleans and he takes his rifle with him to New Orleans, among other things. And he um, ends up getting a job in New Orleans at the coffee factory. He lives with the Murets, his aunt and uncle in New Orleans while he gets this job. And um, he calls for his wife to come and live with him with the kids. And Ruth Payne, of course, drives them to New Orleans, as Ruth Payne would do. But the point of the matter is, when they move back, uh, when they come back to Dallas, this is this is obviously before the assassination. I'm just going backwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. When they come back from the assassination, Oswald didn't pay the rent on the place in New Orleans that he had. And he got evicted. And the deputy sheriff came to evict him, as the deputy sheriff does even here in L.A., and they took all the stuff. He was already gone. He was already gone. And he just got on a bus and he came back to, to Dallas. Um, that was allegedly when he went to Mexico City, by the way. <laughs> he came back to Dallas and he went to the uh, DMV and he tried to hook up with John Connolly to get um, what, what I said to you this morning about his um, uh, military papers changed, you know, that he'd have an honorable discharge. Connolly was out of town. Um, he then goes to the Selective Service Board. All this stuff in Dallas was recorded while they say he was in Mexico City, by the way. All of these people who say he was in Mexico City, sorry, there's documentation that he Somebody was Somebody was just there. commenting about that, and I hope they're watching right now. I hope you're watching we're right now. Because talking about him in Mexico FBI right now. FBI statements from all of those people that he did all of those things uh, in and around Dallas and Austin at the time he was in Mexico City. Those was I've seen the original FBI reports. So anyway, also the Hoover call where Hoover told LBJ that he was right. Not Hoover in tells Canada. LBJ that there's a an imposter Oswald in Mexico City. The photo is an imposter. The tape is an imposter. The Lopez report that comes out of the House on House Assassinations Committee uh, demonstrates clearly that Oswald was not in Mexico City. It is important as hell, even to this day, that they place um, Oswald in Mexico City. Because if you don't have Oswald in Mexico City, which they don't have, because in September they try to frame him saying he's in Mexico City, that means that that CIA station chief, David Atlee Phillips, is involved in a conspiracy to kill the president of the United States and frame Lee Harvey Oswald, which he did. And David Atlee Phillips hated Kennedy's guts because of one reason, the Bay of Pigs. He was in charge of training those uh, anti-Castro Cubans in Miami, David Atlee Phillips and he hated Kennedy's guts for not giving air support during the Bay of Pigs. Now, another thing I wanted to add from last week, which, which just to clarify, Walker did not train the uh, anti-Castro Cubans before the Bay of Pigs. He was brought in after the Bay of Pigs to train them for a second invasion of Cuba, of Operation Zapata. They were going to go again. Because As they, a civilian. As a civilian, yes. Or retiree. Well, he wasn't a retiree because he quit. Right. He was a retiree and he and he agreed with the CIA and he went down in New Orleans. He went to Shreveport and he still believed that this was taking out Castro. He didn't care if he was a general or not. And this is where he begins to intermingle with some some people who are involved with the other plots like Ferry, who's training anti-Castro Cubans and Guy Bannister, the former FBI agent who's involved in, in anti-Castro Cuban activities. And, you know, Oswald was down there and Clay Shaw was down there and some of these other cats were down there. So weeks before the assassination um, occurs, where is General Walker? He's in New Orleans, secretly having meetings with wealthy people. And I, you can't make this up. Newspaper people, wealthy people, uh, private people. He's down there for a couple of weeks and he ends up actually flying out of Shreveport to go back to Dallas after meeting with the editors of the Conciliator, I think was the name of the newspaper, a very conservative right-wing newspaper out of Shreveport. He was meeting with their editors. They were doing an editorial about him. And he gets on a Braniff Airlines flight out of Shreveport to Dallas. And the pilot comes on the PA and says, the president of the United States has been assassinated in Dallas. So he runs up and down the aisles yelling, General Walker was on this flight. Remember, 
I, no, no, because General Walker was on this flight. He's going up and down the aisle in midair. <laughs> then he gets the stewardesses to sign his boarding pass to make sure, I swear to God, I swear to God, to make sure he has an alibi for the killing of the president. And nobody's accused him of anything. He's in mid-flight. It's just been announced. And then he lands in Dallas and the next day calls the newspaper in Germany and tells him the story that I just told you about Oswald being a communist. <laughs> Not that he had a motive or anything. <laughs> I mean, this guy is so deep. And I'll tell you something else. He has been overlooked by the top Kennedy investigators in the assassination for years. And I looked into it and I put up on Locals this the part two of my Oswald script, which covers Walker. If you read part two, if you're a Locals member, uh, it covers a lot of what I'm talking about here today. It, it covers verbatim the uh, uh, Senate hearings of, of Walker um, with Strom Thurmond and others who were his allies in the Senate. It's got that verbatim and it's got other things verbatim that I put into the script. Uh, this part two of my Oswald miniseries, which was five parts uh, that unfortunately has not been made yet. But you never know. There might be a change yeah. of ownership at Netflix. We, we're yeah, hearing yeah. rumors that things at Netflix are changing. So who knows what will happen in the near future, you know. But nevertheless, um, you know, he begins to, uh, you know, take some media uh, spotlight walker to do this framing of Oswald. And a lot of people who are into the Walker study uh, believe that uh, this is where the patsy and the frame of Oswald came. Uh, some other people believe uh, who called the 112th Military Intelligence Unit uh, out of San Antonio. Some people believe it was Walker who called them, told them to stand down. Uh, I mean, nobody has more expert shooters and riflemen under his purview in the United States than uh, Edwin A. Walker at that time in the United States because of the the group that I told you about, the clerk rifle team that he supervised in Augsburg, uh, Germany, year after year to win the award um, for the best rifle team in, in Europe. So, you know, he's got means, motive, opportunity. He's got money up the kazoo. And like I was telling you last week, one of the best parts of the story is um, H.L. Hunt has an office in the bank building overlooking the assassination site. And he's up there with Walker and his men take him to an airfield and H.L. Hunt and Walker fly to Mexico to his secret lair where they lay low for a month till the heat <laughs> dies down. Now, I, you, I, I mean, you can't make this up. I mean, H.L. <laughs> Hunt, one of the wealthiest men in the world, takes General Walker, you know, like 12 hours after the assassination and leaves the state of Texas and leaves the country and is in hiding for a month in his secret Mar-a-Largo, Xanadu, Hearst Castle down there in, in, I think, Acapulco somewhere. I'm not really sure to this day. Yeah, just remind everybody, H.L. Hunt um, ran and owned what company again? What? The, what what company, company did H.L. Hunt run again? What? Who... who who was he related to? What did he run? Just because some people. Well, I mean, Bunker him. Hunt. I mean, there was Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, Dallas Cowboys. There was the Silver Hunts. They were in the silver business. I mean, oil was a, obviously their main thing. And, you know, one of his main benefactors might have been LBJ, you know, in terms of political. But he, he was far to the right of even LBJ. You know, hmm. so I think he was grooming Walker. He backed him for governor against Connolly. And obviously he came in last in the primary, but that was Walker's first attempt very quickly to get into the political uh, world was to run against Connolly in the primary, which kind of guaranteed you the governorship. And Connolly did become governor of Texas. Um, and Walker had a lot of support and it was building. So he was touring the country, raising money like a political candidate Walker all the time. Yeah, here he is after he got out of the nut house. <laughs> When he hated um, Connolly because he was LBJ's boy. Right. And look, he's a good looking guy. He's got a Stetson. I mean, he's a war hero. He speaks pretty well. You know, why not? Why yeah, not? So, somebody Walker? gave him a Stetson. Somebody gave him a Stetson. Uh, Earl Cabell, the mayor of Dallas, the, 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 the brother of General Cabell. I mean, the idea that these people were all in the same city, Eric, at the same time, and the guy gets sucked in, you know, in, in, from the Cortez Hotel in El Paso on June 5th, 1963, when Connolly and LBJ browbeat JFK to 
to accept coming back in the fall to Dallas. That was their mission in the Cortez Hotel, was to browbeat him. And that went on and on and on. And JFK said, I'm not coming back. I was just here. I'm here now. It's June. Why do I have to come back? This is They worked him over, according to Jackie Kennedy, for over an hour until he finally conceded that he'd come back in the fall. And that was the, the number one mission of Connolly and LBJ was to get the president to commit to come back to, to Dallas and Houston and San Antonio and also um, Fort Worth in the fall, which he did. And, you know, there was, there was a lot of information that if he had survived Dallas and the Dealey Plaza situation, that the next day was a huge Texas barbecue on a ranch in uh, outside Austin. And he was supposed to be going to that. She never made it. And that ranch was owned by LBJ. And that was the final stop on the train, according to sources, that he wasn't leaving that barbecue if this other thing didn't work. And uh, he never made the barbecue. So it's, it's a fait accompli. Right. Well, he definitely didn't leave Texas. Well, he sort of did, but. Right. <laughs> Eventually did under armed guard. But one thing that, I, that, that, that uh, Walker says, which is really crazy or fascinating, I don't know how you want to spin it. He also tells the media that Oswald, when he shot at him, was arrested by RFK and not charged and released. And if RFK, as attorney general, had kept Oswald in jail, his brother would be alive. Wow. That's what he tells the media. I mean, and you just go, oh, that's a crazy story. But th he's been dismissed as being a nut by so many people. But it's almost like maybe he intentionally acted like a nut, Eric. You know, there was a guy named Carmine the Chin Gigante. He used to live. Oh, in God, the, with the bathrobe and the slippers. Yeah, yeah, around there. He acted like he was crazy. He lived on Mott Street. He'd come out in his bathrobe and slippers. And they said he's talking to himself. And, you know, he went to trial like that. And they said he was nuts. And the psychiatrist tested him. They said, there's nothing wrong with this guy. It was an act. So I'm wondering <laughs> if Walker if Walker was pulling a chin, you know, if, if he was like Carmine the Chin Gigante. Or just keeping everybody uh, off guard. I mean, some people will say that about Trump tweets. Right. That's what I was thinking. Now, here's a guy, like I said, he went to West Point. This was not a guy who was an uneducated man, Eric. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you know, he had an education. So well, you don't become a two-star general accidentally. Right. I, I promise you. Right. You do not get to. I mean, right. I mean, even if you're a war hero, that doesn't make you a two-star general. No, 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 no. That, okay. That's a lot. That's a lot of climbing. Right. Okay. So getting back to Jack Ruby, he now goes to the media and says Jack Ruby will die a violent death in prison. And he says, it doesn't take a rope to kill a man in prison. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> Who mentioned this? So he's now telling the media that Jack Ruby, now Jack Ruby in prison starts talking to Earl Warren, who shows up in his jail cell, as we all recall, in the Jack Ruby episode, which is down below, if you want to take a look at it. So Earl Warren shows up, and in the movies played by Jim Garrison, by the way, um, the famous DA of, of New Orleans, um, in a nice homage. But he tells Earl Warren to investigate to investigate General Walker. So he's telling the Warren Commission who the conspirators are. And Warren's going, well, I, you know, I can't really do much about that. You know, you're here in jail. And Ruby's going, no, no, you really got to look into Walker. And Walker's saying that Ruby's going to die a violent death in prison. So I'm going like, hmm, this is an interesting plot twist. So, of course, Jolly West shows up, gives him the injection, and he's dead within a, a short period of time from the lethal injection given to him by Jolly West. Um, as we now know, he's carried out on a gurney. He had, pneumo he had um, the flu, and Jolly West shows up, who's not even his doctor, has nothing to do with the city of New Orleans, has nothing to do with the state of Texas, and he's injecting him with, with a flu shot in the jail cell for reasons that nobody could explain. Don't worry, folks. We're going to be doing a Jolly West episode. Oh, yeah. We got to do a Jolly West. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the what? Oh, my God. It's like, no, we got you. We got you. Jolly West is coming down the line. There's a lot of characters. Look, you begged me for Ruth <laughs> Payne. I gave you the Ruth Payne, right? Well, exactly. I mean, everyone, we're going to we're going to get to Clay Shaw. We're going to get to David Ferry. We're going to get to Marine Oswald. You'll get everything you're paying for. And then some of you aren't paying anything. You got your work cut out for you, Sparty. I'm teaching the, the first time this week as a history teacher. Wow. Trying to balance true facts and not losing my job. Wish me luck. 
You're going to need a lot Good of luck. luck. There's a lot of facts out there. <laughs> you know, reach out to me if you have some questions. I'll try to I'll try to slice and dice it for you, what you can get away with. But because the Walker stuff um, with the Stetson, yeah, the, the Walker stuff is highly controversial it's, and, and ignored and dismissed even by uh, JFK researchers. They, a lot of them say, well, it's too obvious. Well, maybe it's Oakham's razor, Eric. Maybe it's just, I mean, maybe that's the, this is really what it was. You know, I, I never understood why they dismissed um, uh, the theories about, about General Walker. I never, I mean, he's a virulent anti-communist. He calls the Kennedys communists. His brother puts him in a nut house. JFK fires him. I mean, does he have any motivation? You know what I mean? Like politically, I mean, politically, they're at odds. He's physically ruined his life. He's physically been arrested by his brother. He's now back in Dallas. The guy's coming to Dallas. He's the head rifle guy in the army. I mean, it's like everybody wanted Kennedy dead, both sides. I mean, right. you guys, if Kennedy want, want him dead from the right, well, actually, LBJ was probably from the right as well. Yeah, it's just in, not in a as lot far of ways. right. It's just not as right. far right. You know, I mean, people, this guy was asking this morning if, you know, if I thought Kennedy was a communist. It's not me. This is Walker thinking. I don't. I don't think it yeah. was a communist. Well, and that's something we should, we'll take a quick yeah. segue and talk about. Yeah, yeah. When we're talking about this, we're not necessarily endorsing one point thing point. or another. Yeah, it's not we're trying point. to give a perspective right. of the different things. Like, he thought they were communists. Well, there happened to be communists. And that that's part of the confusion is a, a lot of times they talk about the Red Scare. Well, it's come to be tr proven that the Red Scare wasn't unreasonable. Right. Maybe right. it was exaggerated at points, but there were actual communists. They, you know, we've had Russian defectors or U.S. you know Soviet defectors who came back with lists saying, "By the way, this one, this one, this one, this one." Um, the Rosenbergs, for example, for a long time when I was growing up, and I was taught in school that that was a miscarriage of justice that these right. poor yeah. innocent couple yep. was executed for no reason. Yep. After I'm out of school, high school, and everything, all of a sudden it comes out. Oh yeah, oh, my. they flat out were you know straight out Soviet agents. Right. So guess what? Well, Nosenko shows up as a double agent. He's kept in a in a in a attic in Maryland um, and tortured by Angleton for months and months and months. And he he um, this was after Oswald and and Nosenko shows up and he, uh, most people believe he was a legitimate defector. Angleton didn't buy it, and they unmercifully tortured this guy for months, uh, psychologically, physically, and everything. I mean, they just. Angleton just did not believe that Nosenko was a legitimate defector, um, and he was. But the point of the matter is, they these uh, events that were happening then. There was a UN day in Dallas, and UN day they sent Adlai Stevenson to Dallas, and a riot broke out uh, in Dallas, and he was hit over the head with a placard by a woman who gained some notoriety for clobbering the ambassador to the UN over the head at UN day. And th there's a cover story in the L.A. Times, a, a front page story in the L.A. Times that the United States was considering putting their U.S. troops under the command of the United Nations. And people were flipping out over this, Eric. I mean, conservative people are losing their shit over this. No, I mean, obvious. Well, not obviously, because look what happened in Korea. They were well, under no, the it makes sense, though, that they flip out over it. I mean, uh, right, right. We, we're not that far off of World War II. Right. <laughs> You're yeah, they, I mean, this is, like I said, in Korea, they're commanded by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, this was a UN uh, situation in Korea. There was a lot of friction as to who was running that thing, and it ends up as a stalemate, you know, with the 38th parallel, you know, as, as a draw. But the reality of it is, a lot of their gripes sound very familiar on both sides to today. You know, there's scuttlebutt about treason, insurrection. Sedition, you know, people are slinging mud back and forth, commies, this and that, you know, leftists, socialists. It sounds very familiar to today. It really does. The Biden sure. administration sounds like the Kennedy administration. Not that they're the same guy, but I'm, I'm just saying. Which somebody at Rumble said um, that Biden is doing the uh, chin routine. He's doing the chin, yeah. He's trying to pull <laughs> it up. But it might be a legit chin. You know, he's, he's, he's very good. He's the best he's, ever. Yeah, he's a pretty good chin. <laughs> I don't remember Chin being led around by an Easter bunny, but who knows, you know. Yeah. Um, what about the connection with Dr. Oshner? I'm not sure of that. 
Doc Doshna was uh, a guy working on the um, um, the cancer injection for the, to kill Castro out of New Orleans. Oh, okay. And, and we'll get into that with David Ferry, obviously, when Ferry okay, uh, cool. was working on also injecting live rats with cancer and trying to kill them, you know, to see if they could get a cancer injection with live rats. One of Ferry's great plans was to drop thousands of mice with little parachutes onto the crops in Cuba, and then the mice would eat all the crops. That was one plan he had. Another one was to drop parachutes with little um, flammable devices on them. Again, miniature parachutes. What? Like parachutes? Who, who's well, he was a pilot, so he wanted okay. to fly a bunch of these planes himself. Got it, got it. And drop some of the parachutes out of the planes that would then catch fire to the crops and uh, burn his um, his crops to the ground. That was a, a bunch of different plans. But Dr. Oxner uh, was a medical doctor who was doing um, experiments in New Orleans. Um, I don't know if he worked with Dr. Robert Heath or not, but Dr. Heath was at Tulane uh, doing human experiments on uh, chips in gay men's brains to turn them straight and also primates' brains. I don't know what he was doing with the primates, but he was also experimenting with LSD and uh, some of the students who worked for him as interns would steal the LSD and they had parties in the dormitory at Tulane on acid. And a guy who showed up who had infiltrated the Tulane student movement, these were, you know, leftist students at Tulane and he had been assigned to infiltrate them by Guy Bannister. He took acid with them and his name was Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> we'll get it. You'll get into that in the Oswald episode. Oswald episode. on acid. He also <laughs> tries acid in Atsugi in uh, Japan. Um, he takes acid there as part of a uh, almost like a defense mechanism in case he's caught and given acid. You know, I mean, they do that. Oh, with the team. Right. Like he that. That's I don't think he wanted to take acid for the sake of taking acid. But in, in the Tulane party, he really had to because it was like an acid party and they had stolen the LSD from Robert Heath's uh laboratory uh one of the students but we'll get into that when we get into tulane and everything else down there but you know walker says that ruby's gonna die in jail ruby says walker is part of the uh conspiracy ruby does die in jail and walker lives to 93 the 1993 and dies of colon cancer um in 1993 so anything happened between uh no nothing happened what could possibly <laughs> Nothing, no, nothing what, at all. What could possibly happen to oh. to General Walker? Um, well, he we was never in the headlines, never in the paper. No, nothing. Well, I, I guess we could tell him. They seem like a good audience, right? <laughs> okay, so look at this powder puff derby falls on hard times. <laughs> That's By the way, look at the date of this: July 9th, nineteen seventy six. So this occurred the night before. Mm -hmm. um, which would be my birthday. So oh, okay. When All I was right. six years old, General Walker was right. charged with public lewdness. Right. So they this happened two years in a row. So there's uh, there's people who thought it was an aberration. It happens in seventy. Oh, oh, oh well, well, this is the first one. Right. Oh, that's well, the first one. Okay. And then he was free. And then free there's the New York Times seventy seven. Yeah. Oh, that's it. no, that's after the second one. Sorry. Right. No, then he got the second one. There right here. Yeah. Well, in seventy two. Oh, that was with Wallace. That was legit. Yeah, that wasn't a sexual thing. Yeah, they had a, an undercover cop in there because the neighbors complained. This was the park across the street from his house. And he went in there and there was a undercover. Um, this guy, Benedict, was undercover. And uh, Walker tried to do things to him sexually um, in the men's room in the park. Right. So he gets arrested and um, has to post bail. And then a year later, does it again. Um, yeah, it's 1976, 940 p.m. Um, DA's unit, uh, 1976, Edwin Walker, right? Now, so he's like 67 years old here, by the way. And the, and he has to put up a $1,000 bail, um, which is kind of interesting. But uh, oh, this is, yeah, no, 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 no. This is what he landed with disposition, $1,000, 30 days. Oh, right, uh, right. One year yeah. probation. Right. All right. I was wondering what happened, what the disposition was of this case. Uh, OK, so this is, um, I believe, yeah, his residence is 4011 Turtle Creek. Now, the reason this is important is, as we've said before, it seems that every single person in this storyline is gay. From Jack Ruby to now Edwin Walker, 
to to Clay Shaw, to David Ferry, to Ruth Payne. I mean, every per, uh, Perry Russo, who's down in New Orleans, will turn up uh, as part of the storyline later. Everyone. <laughs> so yeah, he's playing having bridge games with Jack Ruby. With Jack <laughs> Ruby. Now, now, maybe it wasn't bridge games. Maybe they, I hate to say this, but is it possible that Jack Ruby was the lover of General Edwin A. Walker? I mean, somebody's got to say it. You know, I mean, why was Ruby going over there? And maybe Duff was fired because of some sexual uh, thing gone bad. And, you know, that could be Duff's thing. These guys, the, if you look at these guys who come from Germany, if you put that picture up of those guys again, the three of them. In the They're suit, handsome, handsome young fellows. Well-dressed. Right, right. Very tiny. I mean, look, I don't know, but, um, you know, you can make the argument that. Maybe that that's Walker, maybe smoldering. Right. I mean, maybe Walker <laughs> liked them for different reason other than their politics. I don't really know. But clearly Walker had anger issues. He clearly had sexual issues uh, with the police. And um, kind of like Jack Ruby. Kind of like Do Jack. I look gay to you and beating people up. <laughs> right. Well, get Jack Ruby is the same thing. Do I look gay to you? I mean, he just walked around asking everybody that. So. There was never a mention of Walker being at the Carousel Club, and now I know why. There was no reason for him to be at the Carousel Club, and there was also no reason for Jack Ruby to date the strippers, and he never did. Could he that be it. the tie, though, bringing the left and the right together? Like, it doesn't matter the politics. it The lifestyle could be what tied them it all could together. Be because he accused Jack Ruby of being a communist and a card-carrying member of the uh, ACLU. That was He also said that to the press, that Ruby was involved in the conspiracy and then Ruby was an ACLU member, as if that convicted you of some sort. And then he was asked about John Apt, who was the head of the ACLU that Oswald requested to be his attorney. Unfortunately for Oswald, he called the house and was trying to reach his wife, and he got Ruth Payne twice. And he asked Ruth Payne to call John Apt in New York to be his attorney, because Actually, Jack, John Apt had represented numerous communists in various uh, trials in the 50s. So mm -hmm. it wasn't that bizarre for Oswald to request John Apt to be his attorney. Unfortunately, Ruth Payne uh, did not exactly follow up on it. And um, eventually Oswald didn't need an attorney. But um, he, you know, he does make the phone call to Nags Head, North Carolina, by the way, which we'll get into uh, from the Dallas jail. He he. He phones a guy in uh, North Carolina, a uh, former military intelligence operative, doesn't get through to him. They throw away the call slip and uh, the other operator there took it out of the waste paper basket and saved it. Um, and we now know that the phone number that he was calling was a man who was a military intelligence uh, operative in North Carolina, which was a, very close to an O&I base uh, near Nags Head. Um, which I think later became a bigger O and I base, or maybe not. I don't know what's going on in it today, but I think at some point that was O and I down there. Probably, I wouldn't know. They didn't right. really run around identifying themselves. Right, right. But the the connections that he makes are are you know he's trying to reach out to to uh, his handler, which is this guy, obviously um, from the nine one nine area code. I forget the number. I, I put a picture of. I sent a picture of the of the call sheet to you. I don't know if you still have that. The little oh, for here. Oh, I didn't not for this. You show. didn't see that? No, no, I missed that for this show. Sorry. Okay. I, I know about the call sheet and everything, but I didn't think that had anything to do with Walker. So I'm confused. Right. Well, anyway, the, the, the real interesting part is alpha 66, which are the most militant anti Castro Cubans and guys who were involved in the Bay of pigs who were either not captured or ended up in Miami and they come back and they are affiliated with Walker. And he is the one who is their go-between. There's a JM wave out of Miami, which is um, organizing the Cubans for infiltration in the United States and also for a second attempt at the Bay of Pigs if they ever get permission to do that again, which didn't happen, you know, in Operation Zapata. But uh, the CIA did not give up on uh, toppling Castro, as we now know. This went on for a number of years and um, numerous administrations. So, I mean, how many attempts was there on Castro's life? Like 300 or something, some insane thing. Oh, I don't know. It was, it was in, in the hundreds. Obsession. It was in the hundreds. Yeah, it was legendary. How many failed attempts there were to kill the guy? But they would have gotten his brother anyway. 
What That's is this? the only thing that I, I have. No, no, no. This is a little square piece of paper that okay, yeah. was the call sheet from the Dallas jail. Yeah, uh, I remember that for the for um, Oswald, but not not for this show. So no, I, ju I just happened to mention it, but okay, we're going to yeah. get into it with Oswald. But you know, the arrest of of, of Walker at sixty seven in the public bathroom, I think, effectively put an end to his career and um, uh, at least his public career. You know, in terms of, of being. Oh alert. yeah, I think he was pretty much done anyway. But well, he was sixty seven. I mean, he died of colon cancer in nineteen ninety three. So, I mean, this is 76, 77, Eric. I mean, you're, you're talking about the 80s where Reagan comes to power. I mean, there, there's, because you know, conceivably uh, things that Walker could have done, um, which sure. I don't think he did it after that. I think um, he was kind of laying low, but who knows? I mean, maybe he was involved in the conspiracy. We don't really know. He clearly had an agenda. He clearly was a public figure. He, you know, as, like I said, means motive and opportunity, you know, to, to be involved in this in his hometown, you know? So who knows? Maybe it is Oakham's razor, <laughs> you know, maybe it's, it's just so obvious and people, you know, like you said about the Rosenbergs. I mean, I remember that thing with the Rosenbergs where the KGB files came out and they had, I mean, think about how that was drilled into our heads as kids that the Rosenbergs were innocent. And that it was, was a travesty. It was a travesty of a terrible. It was one of the worst a things sham ever. Of a travesty right. of a sham. And they went to the chair and, you know, they, they killed her first. And then you know, they expected him to confess. And he didn't. I mean, he didn't save Ruth. That's for sure. You know, and it's interesting because Ruth um, uh, uh, Green, Greenglass, who was his brother's um, uh, wife, Green, Green Glass was the one who got 20 years in prison and he worked at Los Alamos. He was in the army. He stole the atomic secrets. Green Glass. And, mm -hmm. and he was the one who ratted out uh, um, his brother-in-law and, and sister. And, and that's how they go to the electric chair because of him saving himself. And his wife said, you better save yourself or I'm leaving you. And he was the one that had the drawings of the trigger that Klaus Fuchs, the atomic A-bomb spy, uh, was given. And that's how they got to the Russians, through Klaus Fuchs, who was in England at the time. Well, but it, we can't do him as an episode, but we could do uh, Green Glass as an episode because he's fascinating. No, maybe. He, he wrote a book when he got out of prison, which I read, which is really interesting. He did, he, he did about, I, I want to say, almost 20 years in prison for his crimes. But he flipped and he fingered the Rosenbergs and he was right. He was absolutely right. They had a jello box that was cut in a jagged way. And he would meet his Soviet counterpart with this jello box, uh, J E L L O. And, uh, if the box fit together, that was the guy. And okay. they had a code name for him and code name for her. And, you know, some debate as to how, how deep, um, um, his wife was involved in the conspiracy, but, you know, can't really what split it. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, on that note, let me see. Early in the show, you talked about how you wanted I, heart, A-U-S. So somebody immediately came through for us. Okay. But it's got to be like a bumper sticker. We got to go this way, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I mean, I just, well, this is a quick response, dude. What right. That's want? pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I, heart, America's on Tell Stories. I don't know if you need the A-U-S, but. Yeah. I think if it went, th yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 we'll find out about I it. Go that way. Yeah. Find out about yeah. it. Got some super chats. It might here. catch on. Chris Wolney, um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Yes, not we've seen that here. name a lot. <laughs> it's not going to happen on seen this the show. Name. I've Sorry. seen the name, though. Yep. Um, they had bat bombs in World War II to drop on Japan. Right. Yeah. I think. Thank you, uh, Mr. Neal. That's true. Yeah. That's, uh, I think, where they got this from. Yeah, let's see. Um, this is so weird and utterly fat. Yes, yeah, to is. me too. I, it's utterly fascinating to me and weird. I, I agree with you. I don't know how we got this far off the beaten trail, but thank you for the show. Very intriguing content. And you're very welcome. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, thank you for the see. Um, yeah, this is a weird one. The Walker one. We needed two parts because there's just so much stuff on Walker, and and the fact that he's been given short shrift by uh, uh, Kennedy historians is bizarre to me. Uh, I, I think it's just too much of a third rail of politics. They just don't want to poke the conservative bear in the eye. 
Well, it's probably, I don't know. And maybe it's that. And it's, um, I mean, they also, uh, LBJ's their darling. He can't do any wrong. He, you know, it's like, well, he was a, a mean guy, covered a lot of stuff, but no, he couldn't be involved. No, no. Right. Not, not him either. Only yeah. in the cover up. Only in the cover up. So who knows? Right. <laughs> Bat Bombers led by Bat Boy. That's interesting. That could be, <laughs> that could be an angle, you know? The uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, this guy was a legitimate war hero, and it's uh, it's sad that he ended up that way, you know, at the end of his life. But you know, uh, he he took some some choices that he made. Thank you. Yes, Verona Verona files. Verona files. Yeah. right? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's why I said Nosenko because um, he was legit, also Nosenko. And Angleton was losing his mind at that point. He was completely deranged from alcohol abuse. All right. So on that note. Next Tuesday. What? We're cursed with Baldwin again. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Right. Tuesday, we're going to do Baldwin. Right. We got a lot of information. But, yeah. Uh, stuff that's coming in, obviously. A lot of stuff. Yeah. People whoop, have whoop, been reading whoop, the headlines. Baldwin so. alert. Baldwin alert. Attention, all shoppers. <laughs> back, Baldwin back. spill, aisle three. Whoop, and in the meantime, they can always support us. One, you just uh, put up a script on unstructured.locals.com. It's in the description. It's next to my name right here. Right. Um, consider going over there, supporting. Really, really appreciate that. It's only five bucks a month. It's okay. Not, not too fair. bad. Not too crazy. That's fair. What do you get and, for that? I put my script up there. You could have read the yes. script today. Well, yeah, and, but uh, they can read it tomorrow. It'll still be there. Oh, right. If they pay the $5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, well, you can pay for the whole year. What is the whole year? 50 or 50 something? bucks. So you save two months. For a whole year? You think yeah. that's that sounds pretty cheap, Eric? I, I think it's a good deal. <laughs> yeah, to you. You know, what do you care? It's not your work. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Look at this. I mean, I put my book up there. Did they get the book at least? What do they get? They get a T-shirt. Uh, is there a yellow T-shirt? Is that what I heard? There's a yellow one or a black one? No, you you can order in the merch shop different colors. Somebody did order a yellow T-shirt. Okay. Um, I didn't know that. And I asked for him to send a picture, so um, okay. Now they could, anybody PayPal who does buy. Any, they could just PayPal me at any time, right? Of course, they don't have me. to get permission from your wife or the, or the oh, senator, no, no. right? Okay, I just want to make well, well, sure. actually, she would just tell them to PayPal me. She, right? That's why I don't want to get your wife involved because she's well, got, well, but, personal... but that's okay, she can get involved. <laughs> I think it's a good I'm idea. I'm trying to learn how to cook, so I need the funding to buy the coffee and the books so I can uh -huh. learn how to cook like your wife, Leslie, uh, who sends me secret recipes. Like, I'm gonna actually cook this stuff, you know, at some point <laughs> as a bachelor here in Hollywood, I'm gonna start, you know, making brisket. It, she had sent me a picture of a cow. I had to like cure the beef for six years mm -hmm. or something. It's just not going to happen. But you could PayPal me, and I could buy more Kennedy books, which is really or Venmo. You could take or Venmo, Venmo too. too. Yeah. Both yeah, of us. Like do that. I don't really care. Doesn't matter to me. Somebody nope. sent me a gift card, I think, from uh, Barnes and Nobles or something, just for <laughs> books. I mean, I, that's beautiful. Make a T-shirt that says "Do I look gay to you?" Yeah, in this town, it'll go over really well. <laughs> in Hollywood, I, I'm going to get on that right away. They probably have that anyway, you know. Oh, but sure. um, yeah, the Jack with Jack Ruby's picture on it. That would be funny. That well, would... we do have actual T-shirts and um, polos now. I'm wearing one. Right. Um, tank oh, tops, etc. That's a good one. There's, How many uh, buttons on that shirt? Like three buttons or something? Yeah, three. It's a standard three right, button okay. polo. All right. I'm not oh, a complete nerd, so I have one unbuttoned. No. <laughs> right. But they okay. So you got the merch, and they could. You're saying that they can subscribe, although nobody chooses to subscribe. Yeah, we I have nearly a million viewers it. and five subscribers. Nobody can figure this out. We've got 1,500 subscribers and a million viewers. I think the term is criminally unsubscribed. I've seen that so many times. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, That's people in the chat That's and everyone else saying that we're criminally unsubscribed. Hopefully that crime gets solved. <laughs> so we can move forward. We need that crime dog. Uh, what's his name? McDuff. Who may be the Duff in this storyline, the, the Batman that may have shot at Walker from uh, from the alleyway. Yeah, could be. Could right. be. Might well, be I hope this movie. changes. I mean, uh, we can't go on much longer, Hudley. Without I don't know because I'll never Sweeney. Be Sweeney. Look, I agree with Sweeney. If I was him, I'd never subscribe. I know. Stick, I stick with the winners. Don't subscribe. I, I think we should use reverse psychology on people and yeah, just, just take away the subscription button and say now, like Chaz Palminteri said, now you can't leave to exactly. the bikers in the bar in the Bronx tale. Now you can't leave. Now you can't survive. Chaz, you can't. You can't subscribe. Uh, quoting Chaz Palminteri. 
Perfect. Oh, and uh, I, I do agree with you, Chris Banks. It should be 171K, not 17.1K. Working on it. Yeah, Working on it. We only need a million more it's by the end of the year. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> really going to work right. out. <laughs> well, in the meantime, folks, thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank see you. See you next Tuesday for Baldwin. We're here? Right here? Really, right here. I okay, promise. I'll be here. I don't know. <laughs>